Let's create this effect using the rotor brush. So with the Rotor Brush 2.0, not only can you separate your subject from the background, but you can create some really amazing effects to make your video stand out from the others. So let's dive into it. All right, so I got my clip here. I'm gonna double click on it and I'll bring up the Rotor Brush by hitting option W. I'll make my brush a little bit larger. Selecting the main portions of my subject. I can go back and fine tune this later, but I'll select most of my main image here. So I'm gonna go through each frame here and if I wanna remove a part, I'll hold the option key and the color turns red. So just going along and removing and adding portions as I go. The algorithm will learn basically what I'm trying to achieve and it gets better as you go. And as you can see, the roto views here, this is starting to look pretty good. So yeah, there's a little piece here that I wanna remove, so I'll zoom in. I'll make my brush smaller and I'll hold the option key and remove this piece. And you see the color red comes up. So that's the part that I'm removing. I could change my view again, see the pink outline. And once I'm done and this renders out, I'll hit the freeze button and then it'll go through that. And then from here, now I have my overlay clip that I'm gonna put in my sequence. So I'm gonna go back into my composition panel and I'm gonna drop this clip in here. I'm gonna drop it in my composition and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and I'm gonna to try to keep it within the boundaries of my subject. So I'm just gonna tweak it a little bit, scale it up, making sure that my subject doesn't cross over the boundaries of it. All right, so now I'm gonna duplicate my roto layer. I'm gonna bring it to the bottom and I'm gonna to go to my effects and I'm gonna remove the roto brush effect. So basically this is just my clean plate layer on the bottom. Then I'm gonna to toggle my switches and modes and I'm gonna use a track mat and pick whip the sketch clip to my top roto layer. As you can see, it's starting to come together nice. So from here, I'm gonna duplicate my top roto layer. I'm gonna make it visible. Then I'm gonna go into my effects and presets and I'm gonna add a brush stroke stylistic effect and tweak it a little bit. I'm gonna blend with original and at, at about 75%, my top layer is blending mode. I'm gonna change it to luminosity. And as you can see, it's really starting to take shape. So from here, I'll select my top three roto layers and I'm gonna pre-compose them. And I'm gonna call this roto layers. Now I'm gonna create a mask and I'm gonna animate this effect in. But before we do, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit that like button so we can spread to more post-production people like you. All right, so let's animate this mask. So I'm gonna add a keyframe and I'm just gonna animate it. So it's kind of crawling up his arm and it kind of flows through his entire body. So I'm just gonna tweak the mask a little bit so it replicates that. You could also do motion tracking here, but in some cases it's just easier to do it by hand. So I'm gonna create a second mask here right about his bicep and that's gonna kind of flow into the rest of his body once the mask gets to that spot. So I'll make another mask path and I'll just adjust this one. So it kind of starts out with nothing and then kind of opens up. I'm gonna move this over a little bit. So then my final frame here, I'm just gonna extend this out to his whole body. And I could also add a feather here to soften the edges. And once my mask introduces my effect, I don't need my masks anymore. So I'm gonna split my layer right here and I'll remove the masks from my top layer here so they don't get in the way. And now basically here's our effect. So now to take it one step further, I'll duplicate my top layer and I'll create an add blending mode and I'll add a glow effect as well. I'll tweak the glow radius and the intensity. Then I'll fade in this effect using the opacity. So it's kind of like when it flows in his body and then all of a sudden it gets bright. I'll tweak the keyframes a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we'll do something with the background. So now I'll go into my effect and presets again and I'll type in CC light bursts. I'm gonna drag that onto my bottom layer and you can see it creates a really cool effect. So from here, I'm just gonna animate the ray length to coincide with the animation that's going into my roto layer. Let's give it some keyframe spacing, move that over a little bit. Then I'll make my ray length zero to start out. And there it is folks. So there you have it guys, that's how you use the Rotor Brush 2.0 to make your video stand out from the others. Hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching, and I hope this video helps your videos in the future. See you next time.